Let me introduce you to the new MVP sauce of your kitchen. It's dairy free, it's nut free, you don't have to cook it, it comes together in seconds in your blender and it lasts pretty much forever and goes with everything. Are you excited? I've got it for you today on Community Table. So today's pantry staple is tahini. I've got two different kinds here. Um, this sauce is so good, you can use it on salad dressings and proteins. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to make that sauce and I'm gonna show you a blast from my past that goes so well with it, which is chicken shawarma. Let's go. For your sauce, you're obviously gonna need some tahini. Now this is one I found at a Middle Eastern store. This is one I found at Trader Joe's. You can see the color is slightly different because these guys didn't toast their sesame seeds quite as darkly, and I actually prefer this. I think it's more delicate. But whatever you can find will work. You're also going to need lemon and a lime, garlic, and whatever soft herbs you have lying around today. I've got some parsley and some cilantro. Now for the chicken, you're gonna need a lot of the same things. Lemon, garlic, soft herbs, some extra virgin olive oil, a few spices, and then one large red onion. Okay, let's get the chicken marinating before we make that tahini sauce. So let's grind some cardamom pods and some cumin seeds. Gather that lemon zest. And we're gonna use this actually for the tahini sauce. Now juice them. I'm just getting the seeds out with my fingers. Five cloves of garlic peeled and roughly chopped. I always cut that little end bit off and then it kind of releases the peel. Chop. That goes right into the blender. Add my lemon juice to the garlic. Oh, it's perfect. And now my spices. half a cup of olive oil and a handful of parsley. <laughs> Blend it up. Beautiful, flavorful, fragrant marinade goes in. Look how silky that is. And then I'm going to let this marinate at room temperature for 20 to 30 minutes. You could also make this the night before and let it marinate all day before you make it for dinner. Beautiful, darling, do your job. Okay. The thing with tahini is just like natural peanut butter, it separates. So you're gonna need a whisk, and I'm just gonna whisk it up just a little bit. <laughs> One cup of tahini goes right into your blender. Oh man, that is so good. Ready? Glug, 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 glug it can seize up and lose some of that creaminess once you add citrus to it. So I'm adding some hot water. Our herbs, just a bundle. Lemon and lime juice. One little clove, Blink. Little glug of olive oil. Say that was a couple of tablespoons. This is my husband's addition. I thought he was crazy. But this everything but the bagel seasoning, basically everything seasoning, is so good in this sauce. It has a little bit of onion and garlic in there. It has sesame seeds, so that makes a lot of sense. Salt, poppy seeds, like all these things make so much sense in here. So if you're from the Levantine lands, look away. Although actually, this goes on bagels and stuff, so maybe this is totally fine. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that in. Okay, time to blend. So it's seized up, you see what I'm saying? So you just need to add a little more hot water to it. Ease that water down. Don't blend it for too long, because in my experience, the more you blend, the more it sort of gets stodgy. So good, it reminds me, of, it's like the flavor of hummus without all that um, sort of starchiness that you get from the chickpeas. It is almost perfect, it needs some salt. 
needs a little bit more of this stuff. But this is the process, guys. Like you just add, you taste and add, you taste and add until it's exactly the way that you like it. And I need some salt. Right before the chicken goes in the oven, you wanna cut up your red onion. I like to do it kind of in thirds. And they go right in to your bowl with your marinating chicken and you just give it a stir. Why don't I do this before? Because then the marinade will take on too much of that onion flavor. I do try to break these onions up just a little. And that's all gonna go onto a sheet pan. I'm gonna go in with my hands. I'm gonna lay out the chicken so it's nice and flat. I'm gonna break up these onions into wedges with my hands. Traditionally, shawarma is cooked on a vertical spit so it gets really charred. I'm going to try to mimic that by cooking this under the broiler. And in it goes for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. See all those nice charred bits? That is what gives this thing the character of a true shawarma cooked out on the street against flames. Okay, here's the sauce. Da 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 da. Isn't that beautiful? And it makes so much. So now I'm just gonna finish it with some of that lemon zest. Stir that through. So it's, you get that little bite of floral lemon. And then, just so people know what we did, I'm gonna put some of this right on top. And I think that's gonna give us a little crunch and texture with every bite. I went to the Middle Eastern store today. I got the tahini and I got a bag of freshly baked bread. So the traditional way that this is served, at least it was back home, is that you take a piece of this bread, I actually sliced it in two so it's nice and thin. You serve the shawarma traditionally on bread because what happens is that bread sops up all of that sauce and then traditionally in my family, you fight over the bread. <laughs> so I'm gonna just keep that tradition going. Chicken juices and olive oil and spices all over and now you understand why that bread's on the bottom. Now I'm just gonna drizzle this over the top. Okay, gotta take a bite. It's hard to destroy this beautiful platter. Okay, here we go. Mm. There is so much going on in this bite and it totally reminds me of home. There's the lemony freshness of that chicken, the sweet, sour, and bitter of those charred onions um, with that warm bouquet of spices kind of holding the whole thing together. But this dish would be nothing without that tahini sauce. It's just the right mix of cool, creamy, bitter, fresh, um, and with the unexpected bite of the everything seasoning, uh, that is a sauce that you are quickly going to get addicted to. And I think that that's the sauce of the summer for you because that goes so well with anything grilled. All right, guys, let me know if you make it. I love seeing my recipes in your kitchen, so take a photo, tag me in it, and I will see you next week.